is that the opposite of addiction is not sobriety, but the opposite of addiction is connection. Yeah. And that comes back to that most basic need that we need. We need that feeling of that community, that support. We need to feel like we are okay and acceptable as we are. And I think what, you know, so a lot of people talk about like, hey, what's the cause of addiction? Like, where does it all come from? Is it biological? Is it environmental? Is it the chemical nature of whatever the substance is? And I don't think there's a yes or no. I think it's yeah, yes to so. all of them. And it, it just kind of, you know, for each person, they take a different path to get there. There's about 110 million people in America that are su- struggling, 110 million. So one in three adults nice. struggling either with subst- you know, with an abuse of a, of a substance or a behavior or they're in active addiction. So maybe they don't recognize themselves as an active addiction, but their life um, they spend more time with whatever this thing is that they're trying to escape with. But for all those people, that's 110 million different pathways that brought them to that, that place that they are. Wow. When I got out of the Marine Corps, I went and I spent some time with uh, Jack Canfield, who's the co-creator of Chicken Soup for the Soul. Mm-hmm. And he spent the last 40 years studying self-esteem and bringing self-esteem into communities, into schools, um, into organizations. And now he, he, you know, now he kind of trains other people on how the self-esteem, how to build up self-esteem, um, taking things out of our environment and our life that wear that down. And as I was going through that training, it dawned on me, like, I believe that somebody's propensity towards addictive behaviors or substances is a factor of their self-esteem or self-efficacy and their positive affect or the positive emotions that they're having. And the lower somebody's self-esteem, and what so what are some things that drive somebody to lower self-esteem? It's less engagement, less meaning, less purpose, some greater challenges, obstacles that they face. They look more at the, the, the losses and the failures in their life and not the successes. So all these things that drive somebody's self-esteem down is also something that drives people towards those addictive yep. behaviors or substances that they need to escape from. And convene, you're going to put a couple of... Yeah, so that's what I'm really excited about. And a lot of people that, you know, it's like, okay, there's so many different resources, so many different tools, so many different ways that I can help people depending on what, you know, their unique journey. Um, a lot of people just, you know, where do I, like, where do we get started? Like how, you know, how do you take those first couple steps? So this course that we're, we're launching in convene is exactly that. It's the first steps to thriving in recovery. And it looks at what are the first things that you can do? So I'm really excited about it. And the first step, uh, we talk about giving ourselves credit where credit's due. I mean, let's, let's not, okay. We can all make long laundry lists of all the places that we've messed up and all the conversations that we wish we'd have gone a different way and the mistakes that we made and the tough lessons that we had to learn. Those things are ruminating our mind all the time. But let's stop for a second and actually give ourselves credit for some of the wins that we've got and some of the strengths that we do have because you can't build a better self and a better future based on the defects and based on all the bad things of you. But if we can stop and give ourselves some credit for the wins that we've had, the successes that we've had, the strengths that we have, that gives us a place that we can build from and a foundation we can build a better future. So in a a short video uh, training module and some worksheets, that's the first step to that thriving recovery um, experience that people can go through and then on to the second step, trying to find some direction, you know, bring some more meaning and purpose and joy back into our life.